Walking through the streets with the heart so bold. Marley Bonbard. Marley Bone gazed in astonishment at the scene before him. This was the beginning of your journey, your birth under the standing stones. And now your end. Do you mean I have died for this life? Yes, but you journey on to another. There's more. Not for everyone, but for you. You have proved yourself to be brave, kind, and just. You are indeed an old soul. Why are Jenny and Queen here? They're not. Only their thoughts. And the witch hunters. I thought it fitting for you to see them, still suspended in their narrow minds. That pleases me. Farewell, Marley Bone Buttons. Go. Marley Bone stepped into the yellow wheat fields, and gazing ahead at the setting sun, he smiled to himself and thought, it's been a good life. Mrs. Gickens, what a lovely baby boy. What are you going to call him? Charles, I think. Right, Dolly Buttons. Hush, hush. <coughs> Is it a boy or a girl? Don't know, but it's horrible, horrible. I'll be a sin. What do you think it is? Don't know. I've never seen anything like it. Well, he's mine, and I love him. Rather you than me. What you gonna call him? Marley Bone. What kinder name is that? It just came to me. So be it. I'm off. As the years passed, the two boys grew up in Hobgoblin Lane, and... Unlike the other children who mocked little Marleybone, Charles was quite oblivious to his friend's different appearance. Marleybone's favourite place was the blacksmith's, while Charles favoured the bookstore opposite. As the two friends became men, Charles spent most of his time at the bookshop, while Marleybone instructed Mr. Stein the blacksmith in making a tunic of metal and leather. The big day arrived. The new tunic was completed, and Marleybone couldn't wait to show it off. Well, Charles, how do you like my new tunic? What can I say? It's different. It needs a few alterations here and there. It's a bit tight at the back, but we'll soon fix that. It might raise a few eyebrows in London. Queen Victoria will not be amused. Stuff Queen Victoria. What now, Marleybone? Where will you go? In search of adventure and right wrongs. And you? I have a fondness for words. I intend to be a great author. Then you shall. Charles walked the streets of London and was appalled by the poverty of the poor. I must write of this, he thought, but where to begin? Charles Dickens. 
One evening while returning home, he found Malibo looking very sad and forlorn. Why the long face, my friend? It's the only face I've got. No offense intended. None taken. It's just that I see so much suffering around me, and I cannot help. I too see this and will write of it. But where to begin? At the beginning is always the right place. Come inside and we'll talk. I shall make a sun tea. Have a seat. Have you anything stronger? I walk the streets, but I cannot get that spark of inspiration. If only I could think of a good title for a book. Strange. I always thought your house would be more luxurious. I had great expectations. What did you just say? I said that I had great expectations, but it's quite a bleak house. Wow, great expectations. Bleak house. What great titles for a book. Would you like your drink plain? Or with a twist of lemon? I'll have a twist. I'll have a twist. All of a twist. Brilliant. Now, great expectations. Bleak House. All of a twist. I have my titles. It was after midnight when Marleybone left. And as he looked up at Charles's window, he could hear him scribbling away with his newfound inspiration. In the city streets, the story starts to unfold. A world of darkness where secrets are ever told. Charles Dickens, his words etched in me. Another problem solved. Now I'll have to think of a conversation where I can drop in David Copperfield, Little Dorrit, and a tale of two cities. As an afterthought, he looked up at the window and shouted, The Pickwick Papers. If I can help somebody oh. For many years, night and day, Marley Bone walked the streets of London, righting wrongs and helping the poor and unfortunate. Except for the occasional whoos and haws, no one seemed to perturbed about this strange little creature. For in those days London streets were full of crippled and lame beggars and vagabonds. The sun was setting when Marleybone turned a corner and came across a forlorn figure. Oh, my love, is like a red, red rose that's newly sprung in June. Oh, my love is like a melody that's sweetly played in tune. As fair art thou, my bonny lass, so deep in love am I, and I will love thee still, my dear, till all the seas gang dry, till all the seas gang dry, my dear, till all the seas gang dry. And I will love thee still, my dear, till all the seas gang dry. 
That was absolutely beautiful. Thank you. I wrote it myself. Your singing voice is very different. It's an accent I just picked up. You're not from around here? From Scotland. Well, welcome to London. I am Molly Boom Buttons. Pleased to meet you. I'm a Robert Burns. Well, Robert Burns, if all your songs are as fine as that, you will go far. In my travels, I have met many people, and I have come to recognize those who will go on to greatness. I recognize this in you. I wish you well. Thank you for those kind words. I'll be on my way. Though twere ten thousand mile, my love, though twere ten thousand mile, and I will come again, my love, though twere ten thousand miles. That was a sad little interlude, wasn't it? You need a bit of pathos. It makes the funny bits that much funnier. Well, on with the show. One evening as he strolled down by the dockside, he came across a remarkable sight. A carousel. Good evening, Om. Bonsoir, my friend. Are you here to join my fell ground attractions? What do you mean? Your costume. It is very impressive. This is no costume. I am a goblin. Molly Boo buttons to be precise. Saker Blue. A real life goblin. Allow me to introduce myself. Jules Vaughn at your service. You own this camera cell? Yes. But my true calling is to be a great author, like this new chap, Charles Dickens. Charles Dickens, eh? Have you written anything yet? No. I can't seem to get started. They call it writer's block. May I suggest that you embrace yourself in something quite different, and the ideas will come. I also am an inventor. What have you invented? At the moment I am working on, now keep this quiet. A time machine. Interesting. Does it work? I don't know. I haven't finished it yet. Now, if I may say so, there is a good title for a story. Of course. The time machine. What a great idea. Now I am inspired. If I can help somebody... Come. I'll show you the machine. It's inside the warehouse. What do you think? Not having seen a time machine before, it's hard to say, but it certainly looks the business. I have a few more adjustments to make, then you can try it. Me? I don't think so. Come on, where's your sense of adventure? At this moment, it is arguing with my common sense, and my common sense is winning. Why don't you try it yourself? I have to look after the fair ground. How inconvenient. There. Get in. Against my better judgment. This lever here, right?
Good God, a goblin! Good God, a goblin. Good gag. Excellent alliteration. You have a way with words. I should. I am a playwright. Molly Boom Buttons here. And you are... Shakespeare. First name, Billy. Billy? All my friends call me William, but I prefer Billy. Have you written many plays? A few, but forsooth my mind hath drawn a veritable blank these past long months. Not a whittle of divine me and rings have come forth. Only a dark abyss lies before my evil brain. That's a bit long-winded, even for you. I presume that you can't think of any new titles. In a nutshell. That's more like it. Keep it simple. Don't make much ado about nothing. Much ado about nothing? You have just given me an idea. As you like it. As you like it. There's another one. Well, Bill, I'll be off now. Nice to meet you. Take care and keep writing. This seems like a dream. And it's Midsummer too. Yes, brilliant. A Midsummer's Night's dream. I just had to get that in. Now which lever? Eeny meeny miny mo. What the fuck? Where am I? Mr. Sunik, what are your election promises? That's Lord Richie Sunak. That's Norman Wisdom. I am Richie Sunak. Mr. Groomsdale. Okay then, get on with it. I promise to reduce taxes for everyone and build new railways, roads and hospitals. I'll give everyone six months holiday a year and a free bike to all the kids. Fairy tales can come true. Why, haven't you implemented all these things already? After all, your government has been in power for the last 14 years. We forgot, but I promise you, we'll do it this time. Poppycock, poppycock, lies, lies. Hey, wait up, that's Tommy Cooper. What's your election promises? A vote for me means all wealth will be distributed equally and a free lollipop for all the kids. And I'll do it, just like that. Does that mean that if you bought a million pounds, you'd give me half? Of course, as I said, equality for all. And if you've got to Rolls Royces, you would give me one? You got it. And if you had to shirt, you would give me one of them? Oh, no, no, no. Why not? I got to shirts. Hey, Yolk, what the hell is that? It's only me, Molly Boom Buttons. But you're a goblin. That's true. Last time I looked. How did you get here? Your guess is as good as mine. Anyway, I'll just be off now. These guys are typical politicians, talking a load of rubbish. Do you think you could do better? Well, a goblin sure beats a couple of combs any day. See you. Ah, reset. Let's see what this lever does. Here goes. You are back. Where did you go? First of all, I went to the past and met Willie Shakespeare, though his friends call him Bill then to the future to some kind of election. But I've decided that it's best to stay in your own time and solve your own time's problems. I think you are quite right. I know I am right. It's been nice to meet you. But I must go now and seek out a queen. There are quite a few round here. I have no doubt, but I mean a real queen. Victoria. Seca Blue, you mean Queen Victoria herself? Well, she's the one who's in charge of this kingdom, and she must help the people. After that, 
I may travel around the world in 80 days, or maybe go 20,000 leagues under the sea. What great titles for a book. You have inspired me again. I just had to throw that in. And so Marleybone, ever optimistic, started on his way to Buckingham Palace. Attention, please. Anyone in? What's your name? And what is your business here? I wish to see Queen Victoria. Have you an audience? Not with the Queen, but there may be a couple on you too. I'll see what I can do. Dear Becky, get your last time here. Ooh, you are awful! So much for majestic decorum. You still haven't told me your name. I am Marley Bone Buttons. Vicky darling, this is Marley Bone Buttons. And what can I do for you, Mr. Buttons? Approach. It. I'm a goblin, not a dog. Now, what's on your mind? As I have wandered through this great kingdom, I have been sorely appalled at the poverty I have witnessed in the population. Your population. The people, young and old, are hungry and penniless. Mere children who should be at schooling are forced to labor up your knees and down coal mines. They pick pockets and steal bread to survive. Sickness permeates everywhere, and the poor cannot afford medical attention. And what do you expect me to do about it? You could sell that gold crown for a start. That's worth a few bob, and give the money to your people. Then, you could take the massive wealth you have accumulated by robbing the indigenous inhabitants of your empire and start building a nationwide infrastructure to provide health, security, and education for all. I'll think about it. I thought. What will you do? I'll do as my royal predecessors have done for centuries. And that is... Fuck all. You will do nothing. Precisely. Myself and my royal lineage have a God-given right to rule over the plebs, collect their taxes, have them fight our wars, while we live a life of luxury and privilege at their expense. That's the way it has always been. I am specious. Well, in that case, you can fuck off too. I don't think that went too well. Ejected and dejected, he walked the streets. Marley Bone's eyes narrowed. Goblin's eyes always narrow when they are angry. Then, through those narrowing eyes, he saw something incredible. On the street, in front of him was a cloud, a cloud with people on it, and a cat. Allow me to introduce ourselves. I am Wolfgang. This is Mr. Cloudman, Dorothy, Marilyn and my cat, Faticus Margaticus. What are you doing here? We have a load of wine bottles here. We need to dump them. Not on this street you don't. Sorry. We'll just be off then. Wait a minute. I think I know the very place to dump them. Come on aboard. You can show us. May I ask your name, sir? My name is Marley Bone Buttons. Not the 
Marleybone buttons. Indeed. Is there any other? May I ask, how on earth do you manage to travel on these clouds? It's a long story. Have you got a couple of years? Not really. I'm in a bit of a hurry. Fair enough. Now tell us your story. Not so long a story. I fell out with Queen Victoria. That doesn't surprise me. Royalty sucks. You can say that again. Royalty. Don't start that. Why did you fall out with the Queen? I asked her to share some of her vast wealth with the common people, and she laughed in my face. Bloody typical. I have no time for royalty. But you wanted to be a king once yourself. That was just a joke. In France, we cut off their heads. Rather extreme, surely. Needs must. Have you traveled far on your cows? Far and near, past and future. Really? I too have traveled to past times. I have met Billy Shakespeare. Billy Shakespeare? His friends call him William. Enough of this shilly-shallying. Where can we dump these bottles? I think we might visit Queen Victoria again. Far out. Which way to the palace? Follow the smell of money. Here we are. Now down slowly, not too close. Are you ready with the bottles? Bombs away. Jeez, that nicks my ear. Victoria is not a bad shot. And there you have it. All's well. That ends well. Let's see if anybody can trump that for an ending. Trump, you get it. You've got to have a laugh, haven't you? It won't be long till I see you again. I'll be buying my time. Just thought I'd sneak the buying joke in there too. All right. He the ball. Get your salt in here. What does he the ball mean? He is referring to me, my dear. I fear that my foolish actions are about to bear consequences. You're not going down there, are you? I must. Anyway, I have unfinished business. Right, son. You're necked. I knew. An inch closer, and I would have lost an eye. I don't mean that. I mean you're arrested. On what grounds? For flinging bottles of fuck Clyde's. Onto these grinds. Okay. Yeah, for the jail. It's a fair cop. Now, this is a predicament indeed. Fear not, Marleybone. Your trial is tomorrow. And I have hired you the best lawyer in London. Order in court. What's the charge? Vandalism, your honor. Smashing wine bottles on the grounds of Buckingham Palace. How do you plead? Guilty. Nilod. Have you anything to say in your defense? Not really. It seemed a good idea at the time. Ten years hard labor. Next. Ten years, eh? Who'd have thought it? Good lord, it's jewels. I'll soon have you out of here. But I'm locked in. Not for long. Impressive. Another invention I've been working on. Now where to? Who knows? We'll just pull a lever. Ayo! Who goes there? What business have you here? Just looking. This is some place. 
The engineering is awesome. Awesome and noisy. What do all his girls do? They run the mill. The mill? Oi, lad. Where are we? Up north, lad. Up north. What do you make in the mill? Flat caps. Flat caps? Oi, flat cap, flatty. All this just for flat caps. A guy in London made this exquisite tunic with only an anvil and a hammer. Be that as it may, we make flat caps. Anyway, how did you get here? In this time machine. Banco! She's a fine piece of equipment. How many gears? None. All electric. Enough of all this nonsense. Let's get going to somewhere a lot quieter. I agree. Let's go. Just a minute. A bit of unfinished business. Before you pull that lever. Did you have to do that? I hate flat cats. Now, all systems go. Well, Jews, my friend. Thank you for freeing me from the prison cell. But now I must be on my way. To where? To wherever this machine will take me. Pull any lever, and let's go. Very well. Onward, to your next adventure. Walking through the streets with a heart so bold Marley bone buttons A story to be told A brave little goblin with truth as his guide He'll fight for justice, won't step aside In the land of Nod where darkness will loom Marley bone buttons Dispelling the gloom with a smile on his face he lend a helping hand The friendliest goblin in this enchanted land